Welcome back to On Stage. Tony Winner and one of my Broadway favorites, Leia Salonga, is back on the boards this summer. In the new musical, Here Lies Love, the story of the former First Lady of the Philippines, Imelda Marcos. The show just opened to rave reviews, and Leia is in studio to talk all about it. <laughs> Welcome back to On Stage. Thank I love you. hanging with you. I love seeing you. Thank welcome, you. welcome home, really. Yeah, that's how it feels. <laughs> and welcome home to the Broadway Theater, where you made your debut, right. won your Tony for Saigon. Right. You are back for the first time. And making my debut as a producer. As a producer. In that same theater. Yes. That theater. What is it about <laughs> this theater? It's good luck. It is. What was it like walking into that space for the first time and being, really being home? The first time we walked into that space after David Corrins had gutted it. <laughs> it does not look like the Broadway theater. And turned it into this architectural marvel. Yeah. Um, we walked in, of course the lights were on and so that we could see everything that we were supposed to see. I just remember feeling incredibly emotional. I mean, first of all, it's an all Filipino company. So already that gets You're to me. You're making history as well. Indeed. And then all of us together walked in and saw this space that had been just completely reimagined and reconfigured. Mm -hmm. It's now unrecognizable as the Broadway theater. It is Club Millennium. That's, yeah. what, that's what the space is. And it is a club. It feels a little bit like Studio 54. You tell the story of Imelda, mm -hmm. former first lady of the Philippines, in this Studio 54 club setting. Talk a little bit about telling this story with this concept to the music of David Byrne. Probably would be best to echo what David has said about it, that there is this fascination. He has this fascination with Imelda Marcos. And when he heard that she did like disco and that she did like going to Studio 54 and that she had a disco ball installed in her New York townhouse, he felt that this would be the perfect framing device for the story. Because it is sort of like a, a, a club where the dance floor is maybe the equivalent of a general admission spot at a concert mm. and you feel as much a part of the action as the actors do. Yeah. Yeah. And you actually do become an active part of the show. Of the show, yeah. Yeah. You don't realize it, and then you realize it. And then even, even how you are feeling, where you emotionally are at, is exactly where you need to be totally. at different points of the show. You're right. You're right. And you play Aurora Aquino. Mm -hmm. Who is Aurora Aquino? Okay. Aurora Aquino um, is the mother of the assassinated senator. Uh, Ninoy Aquino. Aurora made the decision, I found this out in speaking with um, her son-in-law. Yeah. I spoke to members of her family. And he had said that she had made that decision that he would not be prepared for burial, but exactly how he looked when he hit that tarmac. Mm. So he was in the clothes that he wore um, when he was traveling from Taiwan to Manila. And mm -hmm. I remember being in Manila around 12 years old when he was assassinated and seeing his face on television and magazine covers. And I, I, I do remember seeing the procession on television and how the streets were so packed mm -hmm. with, with people. So it's those memories and looking at Ken Kashiwahara's messages. He was a son-in-law mm -hmm. and who he actually traveled with Ninoy. So he sent me long messages from him and his wife, who was Ninoy's sister, um, just retelling what their memories were of that time period. And yeah. it was just so incredible to be able to get all of that mm -hmm. for context and insight and info, which then helps me figure out how to perform that song. And just for clarity's sake, he was assassinated when Imelda was still in power. Yeah. You can't deny that Imelda Marcos is a controversial figure. Mm -hmm. So what was it like for you being so connected to the Philippines and right. having that Filipino pride to do this production, sign on for this role? I think like many Filipinos, you have conflicted, complicated, nuanced emotions mm -hmm. with regards to that particular time in history. So it's it's interesting yeah. and complicated. 
but it uh, it's a part of my history. It's, history. it's a part of um, my country's history, yeah. and I felt that we had we were beholden to tell the truth. Yeah, I have to say, you know, we're talking doom and gloom here, but it is a party. The that's show the, is a that, party. That's the funny thing, and it's it's a party. And Clint Ramos, who was our mm -hmm. costume designer, as well as one of our lead producers, he calls the show a Trojan horse. Mm. It's like, let's invite you to this club. A let's Trojan invite disco you to. Horse. It's a Trojan, a Trojan disco, disco ball. hot pink rainbow horse. <laughs> yeah. That's what it is. It's a unicorn. Um, and once you're in, you are then given a taste of the the history. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get everything. Yeah. And there are a lot of things that have been compressed, truncated, because we only have 90 minutes mm -hmm. to tell this. But what all of us are hoping for, well, what I, what I am personally hoping for is that once you get a taste of what this history is, and you get to know some of the personnel involved, as what happened with my own child, you start to ask questions. You start to have conversation. If you're a Filipino, you start to have conversations with members of your family that may have lived through this time period mm -hmm. and ask them what it was like. Uh, Jose Lana's parents were both student activists. Oh, wow. During that time. One and of your during, co stars. Exactly. He plays for Danan Marcos. Uh, so even he said that those were difficult conversations, ha revealing to his family that this was the role that he would be playing. Um, but he himself felt, I need to tell the story. Yeah. So you're very busy. You're doing Here Lies Love. You're also producing it. Right. But then in August, you're going to rehearse <gasps> the new Sondheim Review in London. Old friends. Which, you, give me some dish on that. What's happening? You're going to be with Bernadette Peters. With Bernadette Peters. I mean, I, it's crazy. But I get to see Bernadette do a first in her career. She's never done a West End run. Wow, which is like so hard to believe. Ever. It's, it is incredibly difficult to wrap my mind around that fact. Because like, it's Broadway superstar Bernadette, like right now, it's Broadway superstar Bernadette Peters. But I, I think audiences are going to lose their minds mm -hmm. seeing her and having many opportunities yeah. to, to see her. And it's, it's, it's kind of cool to be able to watch her do this. Yeah. Audiences in the West End are not going to be ready for what she is going to do. Well, they're also not going to be ready to see you do your thing. <sighs> I'm, I'm doing really excited. Sondheim. I'm really excited. Um, until then, folks can catch you in Here Lies Love. All right, we have to take a quick break, but don't go anywhere. Up next, the one and only Steve Gutenberg. Stay tuned.